Welcome back to Old School Sports and our Out of the Park Baseball 24 playthrough of the Buffalo Wings. We are at the start of the 2028 to 2029 free agency period. Uh, the Wings are coming off a 101 and 61 season, NL East title, best record in baseball during the regular season. Uh, unfortunately, we did fall to the Cincinnati Reds in the National League Championship Series, and they actually swept us out four games to none. So we are certainly a good team right now. Are we a great team? Are we a championship team yet? Probably not to both of those questions. And as I talked about in the end of our last episode, as free agency begins today, uh, there is a great player who could potentially push us a bit uh, towards becoming a great team available in free agency this year. And that's catcher Adley Rutschman, one of the top defensive catchers in baseball, one of the top hitting catchers in baseball, won an MVP award in 2027, the season before last, when he led the league in slugging percentage, hit almost 300 with 30 homers and 99 ribbies. Batting average dipped a bit this past season. Uh, looks like he may have had some injury issues, only played 107 games, but still has put up 150 OPS plus and WRC pluses each of the last two seasons. And I asked... Uh, viewers to a pine following our last episode whether you think I should go after Rutschman or not. Most seem to feel that I should go after Rutschman. Uh, there were some different opinions. Fake name for one uh, suggested that we go with a more cost-effective route. But given that we're coming off a 101 win season, and we're in a situation right now where this is probably going to be the last year that we have our big four of our pitching staff together. And that's Shohei Otani, Andrew Painter, Hayden Yinger, and Shane Bieber. And Bieber, we just accepted the final option year of his contract. He's going to be due a lot more money next year, I would expect, um, or at least looking for a lot more money next year. Yeah, right now he says he's looking for $17.3 million. So real happy that we got him on that three-year, $32 million deal that was front-loaded with 16 in the first year and then team options for the second and third seasons at $8 million that we've exercised both times. But given that we're a 101-win team that made it to the NLCS, that is in the last year of our really strong four-man pitching staff, most likely. I think it's time to go for it. And if you've looked at the money we have available for free agents, you'll know that we have made an offer. $259 million over seven years to Rutschman, and I'll explain how we got there. He was originally looking for, and I guess is still hoping for, eight years at over $39 million a year. He also wants a team option or a player option for the final season and a no trade clause. I initially offered him six years at an average of $35 million a season with no no trade clause and with a team option for the final year. So it was really a five-year deal, most likely. He said no thank you to that and came back uh, asking for an eight-year deal again with a player option in the final season. And his price only came down to around $38 million and change. So the second offer that I went back to him with was this one here, seven years at $259 million. So that's an average of $37 million a year. There is the no-trade clause, but there is a team option in the seventh season. And the contract that I, the dollar value of the contract in that seventh season is the highest of any of the years. 
So we're actually paying him closer to $36 million a year for six years before we would presumably uh, decline that team option in the final season. So did get a team option in there, not able to get a no-trade clause in there. Would have preferred one season less, which is what I tried initially. Would have preferred less money, which is what I tried initially. But as those of you who are experienced uh, OOTP players know, a lot of times you get guys like most of these other top free agents who are guys in their mid-30s or even 40s who are available. Granted, 30 is not a spring chicken, and he's going to be 31 before the season even starts. So we definitely are making a commitment to somebody. And as some of you, as several of you actually noted in the comments to our last episode, this could be a good contract for two, three, four years, and then the last two or three years of this contract, it could be a real albatross for us. But we are still bringing on one of the top players in the league if we're able to execute on this offer. And I think it's a gamble worth taking, given that we are a team that is uh, close to winning right now. So... The big excitement over the next few weeks is going to be finding out uh, what we hear from Rutschman because uh, we don't really have an opportunity to do much of anything else until we know what's going to be happening with that money. And honestly, if we do end up spending that money on him, we will most likely be using the little bit that we have left to supplement our scouting and development uh, budgets, which are paired back to very... Uh, poor levels right now. Slightly above the baseline in both of them, uh, but a lot less than I would like to invest, particularly because we do have a pretty good minor league system right now. Although I guess we've dipped to 16th, um, but I still like our minor league system. We've got some high level talent, but we're an average minor league system, at least according to the rankings here at the uh, end of the 2028 season, but would obviously love to uh, Put some more money into player development particularly to ensure that the prospects we have in our dis our system uh, develop as well and as quickly and as efficiently as possible so i think if we do bring on rutschman there's also potential for us to try to make a trade to take a little more other salary off the books i would say that the middle relievers misael tamarez making 3.6 and the lefty javi atencio making 3.4 are probably the most obvious candidates um, where we can get a little bit of salary off the books potentially and uh, a little more to invest in scouting and player development if we move on from one of those middle relievers we do have the rule five draft coming up in about a month and uh, that should give us an opportunity to potentially supplement the back end of our bullpen a little more economically than uh, either of those players. And then clearly there is a hope that uh, given that our budget was cut by $6 million after we won 101 games and really turned this franchise into a contender, that maybe when we get to the start of the preseason, uh, ownership will think differently, particularly if we've brought on a huge name by Rutschman who's increased our fan interest significantly, and uh, maybe they'll give us a little more money at that point, which we'll be able to put into scouting and player development. But we'll find uh, all of that about, find out about all of that in the uh, coming months. And we did get a. Uh, one interesting contract sign, you may remember that we were scouting uh, the international free agents, Toshi Mitsukatu and Akihiro Matsunu from the start of the free agency period. Uh, still have some time on those international free agents, uh, but as you can see, Kato has signed with us, uh, so we really like his glove. Happy to have him on board. Not sure whether or not he's going to be a major league hitter. Uh, but he certainly looks like he could have an excellent major league glove. Got the ability to bunt pretty well. Has a little bit of speed. Good personality. Um, question is just whether he's going to get this contact and home run power. If he can get those both up another 5, 10 points and get to the point where he's a respectable major league bat. Seems to be a player that could have some value. 
we did end up signing him to a minor league deal with a million dollars uh, if he is on the major league team and he does have the opportunity to opt out if he's not promoted by 30 days into the season. So uh, we'll see what his actual scouting report looks like in the coming weeks. Uh, but certainly interesting to have a potential uh, outstanding glove in our organization to help us out. And we did get our scouting report back on Kato. Um, we're very high scouting accuracy now. Uh, looks like his arm is slightly weaker than we thought. Um, don't think he's got quite as much potential in his eye as I think we had thought. Um, really going to be a matter of how well he develops. Um, and he does have that high work ethic. Um, if he sticks with us, he'll be 22 by the start of this season. If he develops to have 45 contact, 40 home run power, that good gap power with the speed that he has, and an uh, eye that's a bit below average, avoid strikeouts that it's a bit above average, not going to be a big-time offensive player by any stretch of the imagination, but probably somebody that could put up a 70 to 80 OPS plus and WRC plus if he's... Uh, fully developed to his peak. And if he's able to put up that type of offense with this type of defense, I think there's definitely some value for him as a major leaguer. So glad to have him in the organization, and uh, we'll see how things go in the coming months and hopefully years in terms of his development. And separately, we haven't heard back yet uh, on anything from Adley Rutschman, still pending, even though it's been a little while. The winter meetings are starting uh, next week, so we would expect that we'll probably uh, hear at least his initial thoughts on the offer we made by that point. And we have made it to the start of the winter meetings and finally got our uh, first feedback from Adley Rutschman. Says uh, he's impressed with our offer and there's a chance he'll be signing with Buffalo in the next few days. Obviously, no guarantees. Uh, take a look at the draft lottery results. We were obviously not part of the lottery this year. Looks like the A's got a bit unlucky moving from number one down to number five. Take a look at the rookie draft here and uh we will be picking last 35th overall in the first round uh, because of compensatory picks that are expected to be delivered uh looks like to the twins and the padres and it feels like math should indicate that there's another compensatory pick in there with 32 teams in the majors but perhaps i'm missing something but our wings uh, will be picking 35th, uh, so it's good that uh, we had a big season. Uh, obviously not going to probably be adding the same type of talent as we've added the last few drafts when we've been picking very close to the top. But uh, that is our reward for being a pretty successful team on the field this past year. And a big day here on the second day of the winter meetings. Uh, Devin Williams is gone. We never made an offer to him. Uh, the closer signed with the Red Sox organization. But Adley Rutschman is our new catcher. Uh, the fans are ecstatic. We brought him on board. Uh, we're going to have to give up a third-round draft pick for bringing him on board. But uh, Rutschman is is with the Buffalo Wings. So we'll take a look. As I said, it was 259 over seven years. So that's an average of 37 million a season. Uh, definitely fully priced, not a bargain, but it does uh, answer our question issues or our catcher issues. And even with losing Devin Williams on uh, the fan interest hit we took from him, we were at 97 before, but uh, 97 minus Williams plus Rutschman still gets us to 100 or above. So that's uh, positive also. Got a little bit of uh, money available now, as I've talked about. I think we're going to put most of it into scouting and player development. Can't imagine that we're going to make any other real big moves this offseason. Uh, 
but we have got the big guy on board to take over as our starting catcher. And we'll take a look at that contract I mentioned uh, with Rutschman. It did end up being a seven-year deal. We did get a team option for the biggest amount, $41.5 million in that seventh season. Uh, so he's going to be from $35 million to $37.5 million over these next six years. Looks like the average is $36.25 million since we're just going up uh, $500,000 uh, a year for those first six years. So uh, he's got a no trade clause in the contract, which he wanted. We got the team option, which we wanted. We got one year less than he was looking for. We probably wanted a little more than that. But the uh, deal with Adley Rutschman is done. And our Buffalo Wings are absolutely in win now mode. Uh, salary situation is going to be very tricky um, we're at 170.5 right now going to be even higher next year and then as some arbitration eligible players start making some big money um, down the line samuel basalo last year's rookie of the year vance honeycutt um, could get tricky to keep all of these guys on board unless we generate a lot more revenue or get a um, and get a bigger budget. And quite honestly, last year we found that around thirty-two dollars was kind of the only price where we would consistently sell out into the playoffs. So, um, given that we had pretty strong attendance last year, close to capacity most days, and it seems like we were basically at the highest ticket price we could be charging. Uh, there's not necessarily going to be a real obvious way for us to generate tons more revenue except for uh, playing uh, in hopefully more playoff games each of these next few years and hopefully having uh, ownership like what we're doing and be willing to maybe subsidize some losses in pursuit of a championship. So we could be boxing ourselves into a bit of a corner as far as our budget situation, but We've got a team that should be more than capable of contending again in 2029, and that is what it's all about. And we've made it to Christmas Day, Monday, December 25th, 2028, uh, which means it's time for the Rule 5 draft. Obviously, we're picking at the end of the Rule 5 draft as well. I do think my plan is to probably try to trade away either Tamares or Atencio to open up a little more cash to put into scouting and player development. Um, Tamares is a right-handed pitcher who has enough stamina that he in enough of a arsenal of pitches that he could start for us in a pinch. Atencio is more of a pure reliever given his stamina, although he still does have a decent three-pitch arsenal. Uh, we've never started a Tencio. We have started uh, Tamarez at a point. Uh, he started 22 games for us the first year of the Buffalo Wings. So uh, depending on whether we get a righty or a lefty in the Rule 5, uh, depending on how much we like a righty or a lefty that we may end up getting in the Rule 5, that may uh, influence which direction we go with... Uh, which player we try to get off of the roster to clear up a little bit more uh, for us to invest in our minor league system. And we haven't even had our pick yet, and we've already lost a player. Uh, not a big loss, though. We did go through recently and uh, protect the players we wanted to keep. We had 35-year-old Paul Blackburn, um, who spent last year in Albany for us. He was fine, 11-9 and nine with a 3.93 ERA in AAA, but you would expect a uh, veteran, experienced major league pitcher to be pretty effective in AAA. Uh, as I said, he's 35 years old. Best case scenario, he profiles as a uh, pretty mediocre fifth starter or just a generic arm out of the bullpen. Uh, so we decided not to put him on the 40-man roster. Uh, no harm, no foul, hopefully, with losing him. And now it's time for us to uh, do a little work and figure out if there's anyone we want to bring on to help our team. 
And I've spent a little time scouting out the potential Rule 5 guys. I've got an idea which direction I'd like to go, but let's see what the scouting director recommends. And he is actually completely aligned with me. Brian Mata is the guy that I was uh, thinking about going for, so I guess that's a uh, good confirmation. Right-handed uh, reliever, could start in a pinch, good personality. Uh, don't love the control, but stuff a little bit better than average as a reliever. Movement really good, extreme ground ball tendencies, throws in the mid to high 90s, making the major league minimum. He has not really had much of a shot at the major league level for a guy who's almost 30 years old. His most significant action was uh, this past season with Texas. Was not very good as a starter. 518 ERA and 168 hits, including 16 homers and 64 walks allowed in 146 innings. So it doesn't look like he's the answer as a starting pitcher, but as potentially a long reliever out of the bullpen, uh, I think we could do worse. Uh, he's also making the major league minimum, as I said. So we are going to go ahead and draft uh, Brian Mata here in the first round. And we'll move ahead to the second round. Ooh, it looks like we lost another player, another uh, veteran pitcher. Um, veteran, at least. Um, you know, 33 years old, South Korea, Ha Song Kim. Actually, he's not a pitcher. I got confused with another guy in our organization. But uh, veteran infielder, another guy that we had uh, signed before last season, spent the year in AAA for us, did fine. Uh, versatile defensively, not quite a major league bat, but um, just didn't think that his defense was great enough to justify a bat that's going to probably struggle to be very productive at the major league level. Um so we didn't add him to the 40-man either. So uh, we've lost two players in the Rule 5 draft this year. So normally we don't uh, don't lose anybody, but um, not the case this season. Second round, uh, scouting director doesn't recommend that we do anything. I'll spend a little time perusing the candidates before making a decision one way or another. And we are going to pick at least one more player. We're going to go with Camillo Duval. Um, throws close to 100 miles an hour. Don't love the below average control, but still has a three pitch arsenal. Making 1.3 million. And over the course of his major league career, he's definitely been an above average uh, major league reliever. Don't know that he's going to make the 26 man roster or not. But bringing him on board does make me feel a little better about potentially moving on from one of the other relievers on our team who's making a little more money. So we are going to draft him. Move on to the third round. I'm not going to pick anybody else. I am going to show you River Ryan, who we're not going to bring on board. Obviously, he stands out as um, not just the top pitcher, but the top player overall who's available. Just don't love the personality with the low leadership. Um, also, poor greed, high greed, and low loyalty aren't great to have around. But um, I do like his four-pitch arsenal. Uh, I don't like the lack of control. Um, actually, I might as well bring him on board. I mean, he's making the major league minimum. Uh, maybe we'll get to know him better, and his control will be better than he thinks than we think it is. His only major league action ever was last year with the Dodgers where he had a 540 ERA, admittedly over a tiny sample size of three and a third innings, allowed five hits, walked one, struck out three. Um, I like the arsenal and I really like the stuff and movement. Uh, I'm worried that as a reliever he's going to walk so many people that it's going to be an issue. And uh, I don't love the personality, particularly the low leadership, but... Uh, he is talented, so we're going to draft him here in the third round. And apparently the fans like bringing him on board. Um, and that's going to be it for us. So uh, three pitchers picked in the Rule 5 for us. We're the only team that picked uh, three players, as you can see. So uh, hopefully now we will pivot towards deciding... Uh, do we want to try to get something for Tamares Oratencio? And uh, if we can get something decent or really anything for one of those guys, that'll allow us to take a little bit more money off of our uh, books. 
you can see with the addition of those guys and the money that they're making, um, we're now negative in terms of our total money available. Um, but there's no guarantee that all three of those players are going to make the 26-man roster. And in fact, uh, probably think it's more likely that zero or one of those guys that we picked uh, make the 26-man roster than two or three of them. And another relatively big departure, but this was an expected one. Uh, Luis Castillo, who we brought on board to be our number five starter right before uh, the trade deadline last year, went five and three for us with a 4.08 ERA. Knew we weren't going to be able to afford bringing him back at 36 years old, and it looks like he signed with the Yankees for uh, 15.8 million a year over three years. So uh, good for Castillo. Uh, apparently the fans are upset about that, but uh, still our fan interest with the signing of Rutschman is still uh, at least 100, if not over 100, even after the departure of Castillo. Uh, we're one day away from the beginning of the international free agent signing period, so I'm going to kind of talk through some of the top prospects there uh, tomorrow and uh, then finish up the episode to uh, hopefully give those of you who are still watching uh, some time to... Uh, let us know where you think we should go when the international uh, free agent signing period begins. But before we uh, head to the beginning of the international amateur free agent signing period, I uh, did realize that at the end of the last episode, uh, since we didn't have winners of the Cy Young or MVP award, uh, did not uh, share what happened there. Uh, Paul Skeens, who we faced off in the NLCS against, and he uh, beat us, as the Reds did, uh, since they swept us four games to none, was a unanimous Cy Young Award winner, 21-8 and with a 242 ERA. Otani did get some votes after going 15-9 and with a 311 ERA. And then as far as the NL MVP, Ezekiel Tovar of the Rockies, 352 average, 23 homers, 106 ribbies uh, for a shortstop. Uh, pretty impressive offensive season for him. Uh, so he won the award over Michael Harris the second. Uh, we did have three guys who got votes. Samuel Basalo, <clears throat> our Rookie of the Year um, and Silver Slugger winner, uh, got some votes. He was our top vote getter. Vance Honeycutt, who hit 287 with 22 homers and 97 ribbies, got some votes. And then Deshaun Seifu, who led the league with 100 stolen bases and 9 triples, also got a handful of votes for the MVP in 2028 as well. And our Buffalo Wings are going to have $5.23 million to spend on international amateur free agents this year. Uh, after the season we just had, I'm guessing that that number is going to be down to $4.75 million next year. So hopefully we can take advantage of it. A little bit more of a balance between uh, higher quality pitchers and higher quality batters uh, this time around. Uh, you can see there's six batters highlighted in green who we brought into our last camp. Uh, we'll touch on each of them since those are the directions we're most likely to go. Left fielder Juan Molina doesn't bring a ton to the table defensively but has a potentially good bat, you know, 60 power or 60 contact, 70 home run power if he fully develops. Uh, we've got high scouting accuracy on him, see him as a five-star prospect. Um, would be surprised if that's the direction that we go, just because I don't think there's incredible upside there. Shortstop Daniel Zamora, really like his bat, um, potentially has contact, gap power, and home run power that are close to off the charts. Uh, awful base runner, not a very good bunter, and not really a shortstop in terms of his fielding. Uh, probably a second baseman, and you wouldn't feel great about him there. His outfield range is pretty bad. Not really tall enough to play first base effectively. So not uh, an ideal prospect, but certainly the potential bat there is interesting. Third baseman Jesus Vizcaino. 
Vizcaino. Um, really like the contact, like the durability, um, kind of more of a traditional third baseman profile, although would really prefer if all of those ratings were a little bit higher. Like the leadership, um, decent prospect out of Cuba. Luis Pereda, right fielder out of the Dominican. Um, don't love the low adaptability and low intelligence, uh, but looks like he's a corner outfielder who could have a decent bat for us or somebody else. Salvador Flores, a 17-year-old center fielder out of the Dominican. Um, pretty balanced batting profile if he completely develops and he does have high work ethic, uh, but he does have low leadership and low intelligence. So certainly a mixed profile. Has some speed, decent bunter. Probably a um, higher floor, lower ceiling prospect compared to some of the other guys that we've talked about. I'll look at these last three guys here who are actually... Um, I'll only look at Pacheco because the others are a bunch of three-star guys, and I'll only look at the guy that we're actually interested in. Federico Pacheco, 18-year-old out of Venezuela, doesn't bring much to the table at all defensively. Um, few personality quirks, not a big enough hitting prospect that uh, I ended up dropping out on uh, continuing to scout him a couple of couple of camps ago and since then we've been scouting Sergio Lemos a shortstop really like his potential glove with that 70 range uh, looks like he could be a averageish major league hitter um, you know if that contact was a little bit above average and if he can get that eye up to average um, He's not going to kill you with the bat. He's not going to help you too much with the bat either. But that glove is potentially interesting with that 70 range. He's also a guy that um, we'd consider. Um, don't love any of these six guys. If you've got, or these seven guys actually, in the case of Pacheco. Uh, if you've got thoughts on which direction you would go or not go with those players, would love to hear them. And then we'll dig into the pitchers. Um, where there's also four guys that we're currently looking at, along with a fifth that we did scout a little more uh, aggressively earlier. Juan Agramante, love the high leadership and work ethic, 16-year-old who throws in the mid-90s. Um, his fastball is close to major league quality already, potentially also has a curve and a cutter, uh, enough stamina to start. Could have stuff that's off the charts, uh, really good movement and plus control. So definitely like Agramante as a potential prospect. Andres Meza, another starting pitcher, uh, 17 years old, doesn't throw quite as hard. Um, very smart, um, really good at holding runners, potentially has a five-pitch arsenal, although that's reliant on a 20 out of 75 changeup developing, uh, but could have plus well above average stuff, well above average movement, and uh, slightly above average control if he completely develops. Also a lefty. David Salinas, another 17-year-old lefty out of the Dominican, uh, ground ball pitcher, throws in the low to mid-90s. Uh, another guy with a potential five-pitch arsenal, but again, very dependent on that changeup, although his splitter and his cutter aren't too far off major league ready at this point. So potentially is really good stuff with slightly above average movement and control if he completely develops. Esteban Victorino, a 16-year-old out of the Dominican, uh, potential three to four pitch arsenal, stuff, movement, and control, all above average if he completely develops. Uh, high adaptability, high intelligence, really good stamina, uh, horrible at holding on runners. So I think of these four, uh, Agramante is the most interesting to me, uh, even though it's only a three-pitch arsenal. The fastball and the cutter really aren't far from major league quality, and if he can get that curve to develop um, and he can get these pitches all to be you know 70 plus, uh, that stuff could be excellent. The movement control. He's got a long way to go to get there, but a 16-year-old who throws in the mid-90s with high work ethic and high leadership, certainly an interesting prospect to me. We'll also take a quick look at David Castillo. Um, he's a guy who has three close to major league quality pitches right now, so from that perspective, he is um, 
probably the highest floor prospect of any of these guys. Uh, teammates find him arrogant and condescending, though. High greed, low leadership, low loyalty. Um, another guy that's not very good at holding runners. Um, so I've obviously scouted him pretty extensively, but not uh, this final scouting session. I uh, tend to think he would be more of a fallback for us. Um, I tend to think I'm leaning towards Agramante among the pitchers and also leaning towards Agramante when I uh, think about all of the players that are available. And I know that the uh, consensus OOTP wisdom is that you go with batters in the international amateur free agent period and you go with pitchers in the draft um, in terms of bringing prospects on board. Uh, but I like to break the rules. I'm a rebel, if you haven't noticed. I don't really know where I'm going to go. Uh, like I said, right now I think I'm leaning towards Agramante. I do like the personality there, and I uh, like that profile, obviously, if he completely develops. No guarantees, but... Uh, would love to hear thoughts from the viewers if you think I should go in a different direction uh, in terms of pitchers or position players. Uh, the feedback is always helpful to me and uh, appreciate you if you are watching. And even if you're not watching, if you started this episode and watched it a little bit and then got busy or bored, I do appreciate that you uh, made the effort to watch some of it even though you're not watching right now. Until our next episode... We have Adley Rutschman on board. We are looking to add some talent in international amateur free agency. And we'd like your thoughts on what we should do in international amateur free agency. So until then, thanks so much for watching and hope you have a great day.